think our, the future right now and the current focus has been still within the CGRP field. I think that's probably what's going to be coming out over the next two years, um, looking more at the receptors. So we have these CGRP receptor antagonists, the GPANs. There's really a move to get more acute treatment options focused on this, looking at a nasal option. There are preventive options within the space. Our first CGRP receptor antagonist preventive just got approved in the United States from Medjapant, which is also available as an acute treatment. So it's, again, really changing the paradigm of how we're considering treatment of migraine. Uh, Tojapan is being studied as a preventive treatment option for migraine as well. But I would really like to see other treatment targets. And the reason for this is migraine is a very complex disease. There is not one target that is involved, but yet several targets. And what you're seeing over several meetings, including the EAN, is a lot of phase one trials, unfortunately still in mice models right now, really trying to discover what other areas are involved looking at migraine and looking at, at general head pain itself. We have to remember that headache is this giant field, right? We, we focus so much on migraine, but it involves facial pain, cluster pain. Uh, and, and I think that sometimes we forget these areas and patients get very frustrated. We hear all the time in clinic, you know, why isn't there more work being done within my disorder itself? We need more treatment options. And I, I definitely agree there. One of these very interesting fields that I'm not sure anybody's been following closely, but many of us within the headache sphere have had our eye on is the idea of psychedelics. It, it's a very, for, for I think a physician, a little bit anxiety provoking because it's, it's a whole new field that you're not really sure how to regulate or understand. But there's been a lot of movement within the mood disorder field, anxiety, depression, refractory depression, and the use of ketamine and LSD and psilocybin. Well, we know that mood disorders and migraine and sometimes clusters, some of these have similar receptors that are involved, dopamine, serotonin. And for a long time, we've known that for some of our more refractory chronic migraine and chronic cluster cases, that occasionally these types of treatments can be effective, like ketamine for chronic migraine and even chronic cluster patients and psilocybin and potentially even LSD. I'm not sitting here advocating that these are appropriate treatment options right now, or we have a lot of evidence and this is the way to go. But what I am advocating for is more clinical trial-based research and more understanding about this area. There is research being done. There are small clinical trials and case reports out there. And I think this is definitely an area to consider. And the understanding is that these agents might work on the NMDA system that works within glutamate, which we know plays a role in migraine to some degree. And I believe that some of the future options out there we might need to consider our glutamate type options. And these are, again, some of the treatments that are in um, consideration that are in phase one or phase two are, are working indirectly on the glutamate system and on the GABA system as well. So I feel like these are areas that some focus is being put on um, to see if there's any modulation of these areas that is going to end up coming through with positive effects with low side effect profiles. And I think that's really where the that niche is going to be. Can we get something that's going to be effective, that's going to be safe to use, that's going to be easy to prescribe? Um, and I'm keeping my eye on this kind of information. I do think we're a little bit far from a better understanding of how these things work and a little bit far before they come to clinical practice.